Hey YouTube, Mike the Renai Guy here. How are we all doing today? I hope we all had a safe and productive week and have been stalling those Renai tankless heaters and servicing them. All right, today we're going to continue with answering questions. Um, I figured that I was going to do. I was going to start to do this because of the channel has gotten. Uh, I mean, so much pop, so much more popular when it first was started about two and a half years ago. And I get tons of questions and I get a lot of the same questions like with water filters and uh, regulators and um, the water servo valve and gas pressure port and uh, of the valve service kits and, and the venting. So I'm going to answer a couple of more questions today um, and show some stuff. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you is um, the regulator. Um, I will bring the dry erase board over in a minute, but the regulator that I talk about in my videos is Pietro Florentini. It's an, a, a regulator from Italy. It is, can be used indoor and outdoor, and it can be used for propane and natural gas. It is used for two pounds in and eight to 14 inches out. So if you have um, a propane system that they bring 10 pounds under the ground to the house, you have to have um, a second stage regulator that reduces it from 10 pounds to two pounds. Then you would run your 70, 80 or so feet, 60 feet of pipe from that regulator to the tankless. And then this regulator would go, like I mentioned numerous times, uh, three, 30 inches, three feet from the appliance. So this is the regulator right here. Okay, it is um, an F. Again, everything in the description below, and I'm going to bring the board over so you can take a, a, a shot of it. It's an F31052-2BP. It's three-quarter inch with a black spring. So the way I buy my regulators is I buy them with the vent limiter. Now, you're not gonna get it off that easy. They're pretty tight. So this is the vent limiter. It's used for indoor. It allows, you see the tiny little hole? It allows just a little bit of gas, but it also allows air to come in to equalize the pressure in the regulator. I also buy them with an outdoor vent head. So if you're putting this outdoors, you have to take off that vent limiter and put on this, it's a rain cap, basically. So that's the way it will look. Now, this regulator can be installed horizontally and vertically. It cannot be installed upside down, sideways on an angle. It can be installed horizontal and vertical. You have an arrow for direction. And remember with all my videos, with the regulators and the check valves, I always mark an arrow on both sides and on the bottom so that I'm, wherever I'm going with it, I know the direction that I have to be in. Okay, let me just get this back together here. So again, this will be the, in the description below, exact model number. You should be only using the three quarter because like I, I say, you need to increase the line to three quarter to get the maximum flow. All right, um, well, let me bring this over so I can go to the second um, one. All right, here's the dry erase board. There is the regulator right here. That is the model number, the black spring. And then we're gonna go over to this bottom one. All right, I'd like to, I, P1, I think his name was. I'm not sure, it just says P1. But I'd like to thank him for sending me the size of the tap. It's an M24-2 tap. And that tap is used for, here we are, to re-tap the threads in the, with the water filter inlet. So you have your water filters underneath the cold water side of all tanklesses, of all your Renai tanklesses. And this M24-2 is the tap that will tap the threads. 
I found it on Amazon for 20 bucks. And it is a high strength steel. It's an HSS tap. So it's a good tap. I think it was made in like Czechoslovakia or something, but it's a good tap for 20 bucks and it, it will tap the threads in the inlet water. Now, when once we get it out, I like to take my Dremel again, clean off the inside. You're always going to have muck in there. You're going to have parts of the O-ring left over. So clean out. I always keep one of these. Once I, cl I clean off the threads, I, cl I change the O-ring. I clean out. I clean the inside port. I clean this all up nice and I leave it in my toolbox, in my parts box. And that, um, because if you can't get it out, if it's broken, you know, time is money. You don't want to stay there and work on it. You want to get the hot water back on for the people. You just remove the two screws, which is right here on the bottom. So that's the way it will look. You see how it matches these screws right here? So this is your water servo valve, and this is where the water comes in. So actually, I'm sorry, that way. So that's the way it is. You have your mixing valve there. This is facing out front, and then you have two screws right here. That, and then there's a third screw right here that actually holds it in place. Now, what I have is these, I keep both metric and standard. So this is metric and red is standard. It goes from, I think it's 632 to half 13 and it gives you your bolt and nut. And then this goes from M4 to M12. Again, bolt and nut. So you can test and run and see what thread, like this here, let me find it, my eyes, here we go, M5. So this is an M5 thread right here. Oops, sorry, wrong one. That's where your water servo valve goes in. So that's an M5 thread. And then this one is an M3 thread. Let me just grab that. This is an M3 thread right here. A little pain in the neck with this thing on, but it just keeps it all nice and straight. Okay. There we go. Now, that will tell me my thread. If I have now that I have to, say I got to drill out and then take a pair of vice grips. I have a set of Weera metric and it goes from M3, yep, to M10. So I'll take my M5 Here's my M5, and now I can run the threads over and just put it in a quarter inch Weera ratchet, and now I run my threads over. You can find again this on this on Amazon. Okay, it is the 844-7 tap set, and it goes from M3 to M10. Comes in a nice little case, and it even comes with the uh, uh, adapter piece on the bottom. And that'll run over any type of thread in um, a tankless. Okay, gas te pressure test port. I get a lot of questions about that. This is the gas pressure test. This is the gas inlet. If you notice, there's red tape on here. It says gas all the way around. All right. If you go to do a service and you, it's, a, it's say a code 12. You go there and you find this tape is still on. That means that nobody ever tested the actual um, gas pressure. So you need to have, let me find the correct. It's one of these. All right. Unprepared. Aha! Boom! Okay. 
So, you break off the tape, take the tape off. That'll tell someone that it has been serviced. You're going to take off this screw. So that's mounted to the bottom of the tankless. You're going to take off that screw. This is now connected to your manometer. All right? And then this slides right over that. It's a tight fit. And now that is what's going to test your inlet static pressure. It's also going to test when it fires. So it'll tell the manometer will drop to tell you what is happening on low and high fire. Then there's also a test port on the manifold, which is the same thing. It's the same screw. I've showed it repeatedly. It's a machine screw with a tiny little O-ring on it. And then when you're done, you turn your gas off, you put your screw back in. You don't have to go crazy. Just tighten it a little bit with the screwdriver. And there you go. And it's got an O-ring here that makes the seal for the gas. And there's two screws. Matter of fact, I got the screws right here. These are the screws that hold this in. They go right through here and they hold it up into the gas valve. And if we want to, what we can find out is what size screw it is. Let's see, is it in? Nope. It's an M5. It's an M5 screw. There you go. That's why I love these things. I have a set here in the shop, I mean in my workshop, and I have a set on my truck. So that's your gas test port. And then you just take your screwdriver, just give it a little snug, and that's it. You're done. <coughs> okay. Um, let's go for some easy stuff here. What do we got next? Okay. The um, venting. The venting, when I get questions on the two pipe venting for the RU series, the condensing series that has the two inch vent. And when you terminate it outside of the building, the way I like to terminate it, let me just find the correct way, is I like to terminate it with a 45. You don't want to come straight out. You don't want to put an elbow up. You don't want this. You want this on a 45 so it directs it down. Rain will come down, run off this. It will not get back in the pipe. Okay, inside of the units, you're going to find this bag. All right, it's U334-0920. It's vent screens and two screws. All right? Inside of this bag, you're going to have two of these gray plastic screens and two stainless steel screws. What you're going to do with these, just open up the screw bag here, is you're going to insert this into the fitting. Do not glue it. If you glue this in, you're not going to be able to remove it later on if you have to clean it out. Then just take your screw. Yeah, I'm going to just take my drill. And let's get it in here. Come on. And you're just going to, see? You're just going to screw it in there. That's it. Because later, if you have to remove this, just take your screw out. And it's removable. And then you just got to line the two holes back, put it, but now you can clean it. You can glue to 45, but do not glue this in. I've seen a lot of people make the mistake of gluing them in. 
And then when we go to come and service it, if we have to get in there, I mean, I've even put a camera in it to see if you know, sometimes there's, you know, it may not be just up and out. It may be a couple of fittings. I need to see what's in there. I need to see what bugs have gotten in there and have made a little home. So again, 45 down screen and one screw. They give you two screws. One's for the fresh air and one is for the exhaust. All right. Water valve kit. There's two water valve kits. First valve kit, and this one just happens to be Webstone. Most of them are Renai. You're going to have a blue one and a red one. And most of them are going to have red handle here, blue handle here. These two ports are for... So this is, these are the test port. This is where the pump goes in. This is where it comes out. Mounts to the bottom of the tankless relief valve. But then there's this valve kit, which is the RU series. Now the RU series has, now this is what you're going to find. Your cold water, see, cold water, a little different, about pretty much almost the same size. Because the question too I get is, hey, I got an older unit, now I want to swap it out. It's leaking, it's bad, it blew up, whatever, it didn't blow up, let's just say it, it, it leaked. I want to swap it but how much work do I have to do well as you could see you know both of these have made up these are unions they'll just screw right up onto it but as you could see there's just a little bit of a difference probably about a half an inch difference but the cold water the hot water is different where is my red here it is here is your hot water let me get it in the right direction that's your hot water so you got your, your flush port, your on off, and you see here, flush port on off, but you got your relief valve. On the Sensei units, the RU units, the condensing units, however you want to call it, the relief valve is separate. It's in the center. It's movable. With this, you have to move the whole valve kit to say get this now if you want everything nice and neat you know now your relief valve got this little dangly thing now your relief valve you know you have to it if you want to get it away or get it out of the way it's no longer made into the cold hot water it's separate there is a little there's a washer in there and there's a plastic protector so if you take this off, make sure you don't lose that washer. That washer is what makes the seal. And if you notice, you see here, there's a plastic cap that fits right over that. And then the tape tapes it down. And it comes in a, this actually comes inside of the tankless unit. It's three separate pieces. This just happens to be a replacement kit and I don't think there's yes there is it's a 107 000 284 that is the replacement valve kit for the um, sensei unit okay so we got that we got that let's get this out of the way and what else we got I was going to do something with the water servo, but that I'm going to do actually as a separate video. Let me grab my lighter. Because this pretty much is the most important um, question and the most important part of the tankless. Hold on. Is the venting. Now, you know on the non-condensing unit is concentric venting only. So that's the pipe within a pipe. 
on the condensing unit the or the RU series units you could use the condensing uh, excuse me the uh, concentric which is pipe within a pipe or you could use the PVC schedule 40 which is two pipes center one is the vent the one on the left is the fresh air so what is the difference in the pipe for the uh, concentric venting notice I have a, two boxes of 45s now I am getting a hold of every single vent every piece of vent that Eubank makes for Renai and we are going to do an entire video showing it all right so these are two boxes that have and the boxes are 45 they come two in a box and elbows one and each piece of pipe is one you got your horizontal vent and you got your vertical vent excuse me horizontal vertical listen to me okay if you notice that this box just says two it just says 45 degree bends quantity two that's it it's see it, well i don't know why it says one piece but made in netherlands and it has a, a number on it this box says for condensing appliances only condensing 45 degree vent L pipe elbows two piece and then again it says one piece here and then it's got a number all right the difference Again, two 45s, two 45s. But here is the difference. This is for non condensing. If you notice, it's metal. You see the silverish color? You see the female side? See, but you see the outer? Here is the you piece for condensing you see how it's gray plastic again same thing they're both identical they're both exactly the same and this you see this one sticks that out just a little bit more than this one let's get it in the same these they both have rings inside, but this one's a green. This one has a green washer. Let me get my hand out of the way there. And this one has a pinkish washer. Can you see that? So, metal inside is for non-condensing, like the V series and the RL series. Okay, that gets this unit, which is let's see which is this one which the box just says 45 on it or it'll say 10 10 and 10 inch piece 19 inch piece 39 inch piece it'll say vertical vent horizontal vent so that's and of course there is a little bit of a weight difference too but if you see metal and you're going to put it onto a condensing unit a sensei unit that is not the right pipe the condensate will eat this inner away and you'll have nothing but heartache with this one this is a gray it's a polymer it's got a different again a different o-ring there is no markings on the outer part of this so when I go up to a job and I have just say there's some type of a, like a code 10 problem and I know we've checked the fan, we checked the burner. Now I want to see if the original plumber put this right in. There's nothing that says it. The only way you could tell is by taking it apart. You really can't get this apart. So you're going to have to look, get by the, the um, venting that says for condensing appliances only. And that is for, again, the, the RU series units. The senseis, the RUR, those type of units that you need to are going to have condensate coming back. And that's why you have to have the plastic inside. And again, all of the boxes come with this little bag of three um, quarter inch 
by half inch and they are hex head screws that once you put the pipes together you're going to put the screw okay in one third equal parts around this you're going to put it right here that's where the screw is going not here not here not here right there right where you can get your drill in because when you put when the pipe engages into here it goes into back into that back stop right there then when you put those three screws in it prevents the white pieces from pulling out the inside piece i'm telling you you could put this thing together and a minute later try to pull this apart and you and your helper or you and your partner are going to be fighting with this thing it it just glues in now again and i've showed it on other videos inside of all of the termination boxes whether it be vertical or horizontal you're going to get a packet of a lubricant you don't need a lot all you got to do is put a little bit of lubricant just almost like you're putting chapstick on or with a tattoo a little bit of the ointment you don't put a lot on you just put a little bit of that on here and a little bit in this o-ring it'll just slide in but again even with the lubricant it's going to be the dickens to pull out but once you get it in once you get it set you put your screws in and you everybody will be happy so again for condensing it is the gray inside or the box is going to say for condensing appliances. So I'm showing you the right one. For non-condensing, again, like the V series and the RL series, you're going to have, is the box is just gonna say um, what it is, and the inside of it is going to be the silver metal. Okay. I think that's it. Yes, I'm gonna do this water servo valve as a separate video um, because it's again important and I don't want to continue and make it so long so okay all right YouTube um, again I'd like to thank everybody for all of those likes and all of the subscribes and all the comments again I apologize if you put a comment in and I did not answer it it's like I said I it's it's still to this day the comments I, I can't find them and I, I check back it's not like they popping up so again you could put it in with a comment but send it to me in an email my email will be in the description below so if you have a question put it in with a comment but also send me an email um, and then I'll send you my contact information and a time for you to call me and we'll go ahead and go over your problem all right YouTube all right, um, you'll be safe out there and enjoy your endless hot water and I will see you on the next video. Take care now. Bye-bye.